Coon Cassio Seifel TV. Anyway, let's just forget the intro. Yeah. How's your YouTube channel going? <laughs> hey, perfect, actually. Like, comment, subscribe, you know. All that malarkey. YouTube channel, like New Joshua channel. Nah, it's good, bro. It's really good. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Always behind the scenes. I respect what you do, because now I realise how difficult it is. You're on the road doing what you're doing. Imagine when you're trying to train and do all the other stuff to promote boxing and then trying to capture content along the way. It's not exactly what you do, because yours is in-depth, more exclusive, and getting people's thoughts and asking them grilling questions. Ours is just capturing what we've been up to and then talking over it and stuff. So it's different, but it's still very relevant and it takes a lot of time. So big respect to you, bro. It's good what you've been doing. Thank you. And I think, was I one of the first when you come down to Maryland Estate? Well, yeah, I mean, it was like eight years ago. More? Uh, no. I was I pro then? No. Yeah. 211. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, about a year before you went to the Olympics. Yeah, I'm not going to say what I really want to say about. Go on, say it, say it, say. It. Well, I just part of me thinks you're a pay-per-view star. Stay in your lane, like stick with the boxing. And <laughs> 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 That's all I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do your thing, I do my thing. But. Uh, that's jokes that that's jo I've got beef with everyone right now <laughs> no nah, listen well, that's, that's what I mentioned Go no on, but you I'll, be, I'll be serious yeah. I'm more than happy to help promote your channel up but I've been working with you for years, for years anyway, nah Joe so is, as I said good. we're completely different than what we do yeah. imagine I picked up a camera and I started interviewing everyone myself then there's what? an issue. Imagine I picked up a camera oh. and I started interviewing. Yeah, I heard what you said. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, you were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's Because you know different. I can't say that. Oh, what if I lace the gloves on, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've your... seen you. I've seen you sparring fury and all that Oh, right, okay, anyway. You tried. How are you? Good, good. Long good. week in New York? Yeah, proper long week. Yeah. Proper, yeah, man. But it was good, though. Um, felt more relaxed as well. As I said, there's not the same pressure I face here. Here, I want to deliver to the people that have been supporting me out there. It's underdog, isn't it? So I can go out there and just chill out a bit more and just uh, have fun. At that press conference the other day, did you not feel uncomfortable because that's the wrong word, but did you no, kind of feel like they, the, the media there had an agenda against you? No, I, I, what I found out though is that, and for certain fighters as well, if you can, up and coming fighters, it is good to start building a relationship with the States. Even musicians, even entertainers, even whatever, people like yourself, because I feel like where America had like Hollywood, big entertainment, Warner Brothers, big music, Spotify, all American based companies, Facebook, American based, whatever. When someone from the States talks, i.e., like the president, he talks for the world. And I feel like it was important to kind of go over there and say my piece. So when I was saying my piece when I was in the States, certain American journalists, they were asking me questions from a point of view of what the only American heavyweight they have was saying which is obviously going to be biased because he's not going to talk positive about me. So when I then countered what they were saying, I was like, I get where he's coming from, but let me give it to you from the horse's mouth. They were like, ah, oh, so that's what's been happening. So that's kind of why it may have seemed a bit biased to a certain degree, but I didn't expect anything else. But that is the reason why we went out there, so I can kind of build the relationship and start giving them the message from my mouth as well. Because everyone has a chance to say their piece, but I feel like out there is a good chance to kind of build a relationship with them guys so they know that... Wilder doesn't speak for the whole heavyweight division. Mm. Not all of the media, I will say. Just, it was just a few select people mm. that just seemed like they were kind of yeah. on your case, shall we say. But it's good, though. It's good. That's what you need. Not everyone's here to support me. And that's what's good is because um, I can't... I said it... When did I say it? Age, I can't carry the heavyweight division on my back. I said it a while ago in one of your interviews. And I feel like now there's speculation, who's the best, there's interest. Reporters are against me, some reporters are for me. And it's good. So um, that's what the division needs. How did you feel about press conference today, Miller, a little bit? It was a, obviously a lot different to the press conference the other day. Yeah, uh, you're in New York now. <laughs> you're in New York. He's on my soil, isn't it? You know, so. well, is that why you believe he was kind of a little I bit tamer know, than the I other day? Know, or? But like, gang, gang, baby. <laughs> gang, gang, baby. <laughs> nah, do you remember when Bruno was saying that? All jokes aside, like, we're about our business. If he, if he wants to take it that far, then I won't do nothing. But there were people that weren't happy about what he did in the States, so I don't know. Maybe just. Do you want to elaborate maybe, on that a little bit maybe more? Maybe he's just not as dumb as he looks. Okay. Mm. You said you wanted to reconstruct his face and his body. Yeah, I like that. I like doing that. Some yeah. fighters, some fighters got tough heads, but I feel like because um, he's got so much grease and cheeseburger fat around his face, I think he just cut eye, bust nose. Um, like just reconstruct his face a little bit. 
lift and stuff like that. Just break him down. How much input do you have on what undercard will be at MSG on June the 1st? Interesting. They were saying it's going to be like a England versus New York slash American type thing. English, Irish versus... I was yeah. like, what we're trying to do is build the bridge. We're not trying to burn it. I mean, we're not going out there to create... create oh, so you're not really for this idea? or I'm not really for it, but I'm not a promoter. That's why I let the promotional guys do their magic. They do a great job. But I think it'd be best if we do just good fights. You know, whether it's against a New Yorker versus another American fighter from LA or something like that, no problem, or two, two Brits fighting out there. Whatever works, but it doesn't have to be us against them. We're trying to bridge the gap, not um, burn it. Okay. Something I did want to ask you about the other day and I didn't. Uh, what are your thoughts on <coughs> the comments over the last few weeks from Lennox Lewis? To be honest, I don't see them, but what I hear is uh, he doesn't really have much... Uh, positive stuff to say okay. if I'm honest so with that being said I think it reflects back to my comments about how I feel about when I leave the and if I met him face to face it'll probably be different do you know what I mean you, you know? believe stuff has been taken out of context in his comments no or? because the thing is it's been, uh, he's been documented on, on camera saying it but when you meet someone face to face they don't have the same views they have when they were like just one on one in front of the camera. So that's that being said. But as I said, my outlook on the heavyweight division is when I'm done with the sport, all I want to do is just say nice, positive things about other heavyweights that are breaking my record, doing better than me, and taking their own route in boxing. Um, I am not going to follow Lennox Lewis's route, or no Wilder or Fury, Povetkin, Vladimir are going to follow his route either. Do you know what I mean? So um, I feel like he had his thing set out. That was good for him. I have my thing. That's good for me. And you just have to respect someone for doing it. Not be envious. I don't want to say jealous. He's maybe not jealous, but don't have anything negative to say. That's what I want to do when I finish. It's just pure positive. Respect that kid. He's doing well. Whatever route he's taking, I'm sure he's got good people around him. And if he needs my support, I'm here. Nothing more, nothing less. Do you one, know what I mean? Yeah. One last thing. Um, talking to Eddie Hearn there, obviously you're... Sole focus is June the 1st. Whatever's going on behind the scenes is yeah. going on behind the scenes. We yeah. know that. But um, Eddie Earn tells us he's still in kind of trying to be in communication with Wilder's team about what's going to be happening kind of after June the 1st, we like. How yeah. much in the loop are you with, with I just remember like, when we were trying to make contact for April 13th, they're just like, I said, it's, it's not opinions. They were just saying, oh, we don't want to contact these management team. Um, we're going to freeze them out. And that was, it. that was just where it was left, really. Um, they'd been trying to make contact. Um, and that was it. If you look at the interviews, you'll see him saying it himself. So I hope they kind of change their tune now because you just realise that he's going to mess himself up. Like, they thought them two, not them two, but while the black ball in me was going to be a funny situation, I'm going to struggle. But we've gone to New York and... We've sold out like the fastest pre-selling tickets in history, so it just shows, isn't it? Like we'll still be doing good things and positive things in the division. And while Fury's gonna done something major, and Wilder's just sitting there now, thinking, what does he do next? Probably have to fight Brazil. So he should be kind of picking up the phone, trying to make this fight happen. Because um, if not, I feel like he'll just be in a sticky situation when it comes to the end of my run June first and what Fury does next. So I think he kind of needs to put his finger at his ass and and get in contact with us. Does it look, does it seem like Eddie Hearn used this word like a global, uh, what's the word he used? A gang up from them yeah, against yeah. you. Is that the way you kind of see it? Certain degree, certain degree, certain degree. But I don't know why, like if you want to fight someone, you're going to fight someone. You don't want to be like, we ain't going to contact. Remember when he, he direct messaged Dylan and was like, I ain't got to fight you for two years. I can keep on fighting XX and X and then when I'm ready, I'll fight you. So it's just like, uh, they, they, he's doing it to most people, isn't he? He's not just me, he's done it to Dylan. He's tried to blacklist him. Dylan's been calling him out since the cows come home, um, but he don't want to know. So uh, it's just his way of dealing with business. When he's ready, Dylan's sitting here, I'm sitting here, we're, we're both ready as well. If Wilder fights Brazil, it mm. kind of leaves Dylan White in a certain situation there, because he's obviously the WBC Dylan fought, of all. Dylan could have fought for the heavyweight championship for the world. So um, he has his own plans, I think, of, of the route he wants to take. Maybe he wants to fight for the WBC, so he wants to go down that route. But yeah, if, if Wilder fights Brazil, 
maybe Dylan can fight Povetkin or Ortiz or something like that in the meantime. But if not, it's a shame because he had a good opportunity to fight for the titles in front of a big audience as well. Uh, am I, sorry, am I right in saying that his problem as well from what he was saying was the rematch terms? I don't think... Honestly, like, you could ask me the Big Baby uh, the big baby Miller rematch terms. I'm not too sure about that. With the... But you must know, obviously, the basic... the Dylan uh, rematch clause, honestly, what the best thing you could do is ask Eddie, but if it was down to me, I would not put him in a position where it doesn't benefit him either. Remember, like, my view of it is, like, I fought for the title of my 16th fight, defended it, fought Klitschko, we had a rematch clause. Um, when I fought Martin, we had a rematch clause. Um, Parker, there wasn't a rematch clause. Um, winner takes all. So it's like, what, Dylan ain't the first fighter I've come across at a championship level, and he's not the first fighter I've come across who we've had a rematch clause with. So, like, what makes him such a special case with this re with, I'm going to give him the worst deal in history for a rematch clause? I knocked his ass out already. Why would we think I'm scared to do it again? Like, I'll give the boy what he wants. I just wanted to fight him, but it's not enough. He went on Talk Sports, said I lowballed him, and I, which was a complete lie. People just make stuff up. But, um, yeah, look. I would never give him a low ball offer in a rematch clause um, for no apparent reason. I'll give, it to, I'll give him what we think he deserves and then he has a chance to become champion of the world. But now he has to go and fight four or five eliminators to have the same opportunity he could have had in the space of in, in the next eight, eight to ten weeks. It's just interesting. But as I said, fast forward to when I'm an old man. Respect Dylan for what he's doing. He's making the right moves for himself and I wish him well in his career. Anthony Joshua, thank you very much for talking to us. Anthony Joshua YouTube channel from now on. When you introduce me. I mean, what's the long term plans for you? <laughs> <laughs> more likes, more comments, and more subscribers. Fake it till you make it. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs>